8% of x plus 1 is 50. What is x? Okay, so if you think you could solve this, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm not going to really give you any hints here because I want to give you an opportunity to figure this out all on your own. But I will say this much. We are talking about percent. And solving percent problems or knowing how to solve all different types of percent problems is probably one of the most important practical skills that anyone can have. If you just think about it, how often do you see this symbol every day? Well, if you go to the store, you see, uh, you know, 50% off, 80% off, or you watch the news, they're talking about inflation or interest rates, et cetera, et cetera. So I would just kind of like, um, you know, challenge you, you know, just think about how uh, much or how often you see percent symbols throughout your everyday life, every single day. You see this thing all the time, so you really want to have a strong understanding of percent. Now, when I solve this problem, okay, you may not solve this uh, problem the way I'm going to solve it, but you still can end up with the right answer. So as long as you know what you're doing, because there's different ways you could, could have been taught percent. Okay, So again, as long as you're not guessing and you can get the right answer, that's what really counts. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, now, if you were confused on how to do this problem, well, let's kind of break this down in uh, components of how to solve a percent problem, because we are dealing with percent. Now, as I indicated in the beginning of this video, uh, you could be uh, taught percent in a couple different ways, all right? So it all depends on, uh, you know, when you went to school, what teachers you had, and kind of what percent methods uh, uh, that you were, they kind of emphasized, right? So when I teach percent in my uh, math courses, so those would include courses like my pre-algebra or algebra one courses. I also have a math foundations course. I kind of give you uh, different tools that you could use to solve percent problems. But uh, one of the great things about percent or solving percent problems is not one way. But let's just go ahead and break this down and first review what's going on, okay? Well, let's just look at the problem. 8% of x plus 1. Well, this x plus 1 represents some value. So anytime you uh, have a problem like this and you're kind of confused about the problem or what to do, always try to substitute in numbers or values. To try, In other words, make an easier version of the problem just so you can kind of get a sense of what's really going on. So we're trying to find a percent of a number, right? Well, we don't know what the number is. It's this thing x plus 1. So let's just make sure we understand how to find a percent of a number in general. So let's take a look at a problem like this, 8% of 30, okay? So if you can't do this problem, you're definitely not going to be able to do this problem. So how do you find a percent of a number, i.e., 8% uh, of 30? How will we solve this problem? Well, hopefully, you know that what we have to do is we need to change our percent into a decimal. Okay, so we're going to rewrite 8% as 0 0.08. So how do you go from a percent to a decimal? Well, that's pretty easy. All we're going to do is take that percent. In this case, it's 8%. We could take that and divide by 100, and we get 0 0.08. So anytime you want to go from a percent to a decimal, just divide by 100. And effectively, that's the same as moving a decimal point over two places to the left. So let's just uh, see that real quick. So 8 is the same thing as 8.0%. So if I want to change this to a decimal, I can move that over two places to the left, that decimal point. I'm going to get 0 0.08. Okay, so these are just real basic foundational percent skills that hopefully you understand. If you are rusty on this, then that's probably a pretty good indication that you need to go back and review percent. Okay, so... Uh, first step, we want to find a percent of a number is you change that percent to a decimal. So 8% is 0 0.08. Then we just simply multiply by that number. So 0 0.08 times 30, we can use our calculator, we'll get 2.4. All right, so knowing that, if we want to find 8% of this number, okay, this number we don't know exactly what it is. It's expressed as x plus 1. We're basically going to follow the same pattern here, but we have some additional information right there as well. So let's go to tie that all in. 
And the way I'm going to suggest you do percent problems uh, that are a little bit more involved is to use algebra, okay? Set up a basic equation. It's not that difficult. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about right now. Okay, so we're going to just translate this sentence into a nice little lovely algebraic equation. 8% of x plus 1 is 50. All right, so I need to find a percent of this number here. So 8%, I know I'm going to have to convert that to a decimal, so that's 0 0.08. So 8% of this number, x plus 1, how do I find a percent of a number? Easy, I just take this as a decimal and multiply by that number. So this is going to be 0 0.08 times this number, x plus 1. Right? So 8% of x plus 1 is the same thing as 0 0.08 times x plus 1. And this is, anytime you see this word is in mathematics, it's always the equal sign. Okay, so this whole thing is or is equal to, so we're going to put an equal sign, 50. All right, so let's make sure we understand this. 8% of x plus 1 or 0 0.08 times x plus 1 is or is equal to uh, 50. And what we have right here is a nice uh, basic algebraic equation that hopefully you know how to solve. All right, so here at this point, if you were confused on how to set this up, the second stage of this problem is your skills, your ability to solve uh, this equation. Now, this problem is going to be pretty difficult to do without setting up some sort of algebraic equation. So even though I said that, hey, there's a couple different approaches to solve percent problems, this particular problem, you will need to have set up some sort of equation. All right, so here we have 0 0.08 times x plus 1 is equal to 50. We're focusing in on what it, x is equal to. So we need to solve this equation for x. So the first thing we need to do is to do uh, the distributive property. Okay, we have a number outside of a sum or difference where the variable's at. So we're going to take this 0 0.08, multiply it by x. We're going to get 0 0.08x. But we also need to take this 0 0.08 and multiply it by 1. 0 0.08 times 1, of course, is 0 0.08. So that's the first thing we need to do. So 0 0.08x plus, point, um, uh, plus 0 0.08 is equal to 50. All right, so what do we need to do next? Well, uh, the next thing we need to do is subtract 0 0.08 from both sides of the equation. All right, so remember, when you're solving an equation, we want to have all our variables on the left and all of our numbers on the right. So this stuff right here, if you're kind of lost on it, what you need to do is uh, kind of uh, brush up on your basic equation solving skills. Okay, if you need to help with any of this stuff, I'd probably uh, suggest you check out like my pre-algebra course. Okay, so we're going to subtract 0 0.08 from both sides of the equation. Again, don't feel shy about using your calculator. And when we do this, right, we're going to uh, be end up with, when actually, make sure you write it out this way as well. Okay, show your steps. We're going to subtract 0 0.8 from both sides of the equation. So you're kind of adding down in a column manner. So it's 0 0.08x plus nothing is 0 0.08x. Positive 0 0.08 minus uh, 0 0.08 is zero. That goes away. But whatever we do from once on one side of the equation, we have to do the exact same thing on the other side. So 50 minus 0 0.08 is 49.92. Uh, okay, so now 0 0.08x is equal to 49.92. How do we solve for x? Easy. We're simply going to divide both sides of the equation by 0 0.08. So now we just go into our calculator and we go 49.92 uh, divided by 0 0.08. You will get 624. Okay, so hopefully you got this right, but here's the deal. Let's suppose we did this whole thing and we have our answer 624. Can we check our work? Yes, we can. Let's go ahead and do this right now. So 8%, 8%, which is the same thing as uh, 0 0.08, 8% of x plus 1 is 50, So or 0 0.08 times x plus 1 is 50. We're saying that x is equal to 624. Well, let's replace this x with 624 and see if the left-hand side equals out to be uh, equal to the right-hand side. So this would be the same thing as 0.08 times 624 plus 1. We're going to replace that x with 624. So 0.08 times 624 plus 1, which is the same thing as 625. If you do this in your calculator, you'll see that you'll end up with 50. So 50 equals 50. That is a true statement. This is how we can check our answers. This is why... Anytime you're taking a test or a quiz, the worst thing you can do is turn in your test uh, fast, right? 
And I've seen this happen so many times over the years where students will be like, oh, look at me, I'm so smart, da 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 da, da. They'll take a, uh, their one hour test and they'll turn, it, turn uh, their test in early with 30 minutes remaining. They'll be like, here, here you go. And everybody looks at that person like, oh my goodness, that person's a genius. They did that test, that one hour test in a half hour. That must be like, you know, Einstein. Listen, that's actually not a smart thing to do. That's actually a very terrible thing to do because in this 30 minutes, what you can be doing is uh, reviewing, look for mistakes, double checking your solutions, all these different type of things. So never, never turn in your math tests or quizzes early if you happen to be a math student. Okay, so if you need additional help with percent, let me give you a couple uh, last remaining suggestions. One, I have a ton of different videos on percent on my uh, YouTube uh, channel, so you can check those things out. But if you're looking for a real kind of formal review, formal instruction on this, I'm going to suggest three different courses. Uh, for this particular level of percent problem where you had to solve equations, I'm going to suggest my pre-algebra course, but if you need a kind of more basic refresher and basic math, you can also check out my Math Foundations course as well. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.